I'm super happy to be here today um, at the Applied Machine Learning Days to talk about uh, how technology actually can uh, help us face the most pressing and the most pressing challenge uh, human and humanity is facing right now. Uh, and of course, I'm talking about the r rise of AI. No jokes apart, it's like climate change, which I think is a more credible threat and more pressing one. I will start with a cartoon of Shapa that I like a lot. It's uh, basically you have one guy at COP24 that's talking about climate change and saying, climate change is caused by two things. First one is human activity, and the second is human inaction. And today, throughout my talk, um, I will explain how data and machine learning can influence human activity and act as a catalyst to trigger human action. So now, to mitigate climate change, we often talk about national policies, we talk about ma major energy transformations. However, we all know that those national policies and major transformation in industry, they often take decades to happen. Because infrastructure are locked in, and we need a lot, a lot of time to make an actual change. Individual changes, at the, end of the, the other end of the spectrum, they have the potential to be much more rapid and widespread. I take an example. If you decide today that you will uh, not use your car anymore or sell your car or stop using it, I mean, this will start right now. Okay. Whereas if, we, uh, if a government or we decide to optimize power plants, this will take 10 years or more. So now the question is, as an individual, what are the actions that I can take today? What is the change in my behavior that I can take today in order to have the highest impact? Uh, on uh, highest positive impact, of course, on climate change. There is a very interesting study that is published in 2017 in the Environmental Research Letters about uh, climate change mitigation. Researchers considered the broad range of individual actions and calculated or quantified their impact on, uh, on uh, our climate. I will share with you a few some of the results today. So they basically rank the most effective individual actions that can be taken. The first one is have one fewer child. This, I will not comment on this one. It's quite controversial, especially that AMLD is providing uh, free childcare, so which I think uh, is a super thing. Second one is to leaving, so basically leaving car free. It means get rid of your car or don't buy car at all. This is the highest, second highest impact. Third one is avoiding airplane travel. And the fourth is eating a plant-based diet. It means stop eating meat. And as you see, let me focus on the second, third, and fourth action. Two out of the four actions with highest impact are related to mobility behavior. So it's clear that mobility is a crucial element here where you can act. However, there is a challenge. Individuals are usually unable to quantify their emission and their emission from mobility. In order to change, we need to understand what's the statue right now. Okay, what's our current situation with respect to the emission? Now I'm plotting, uh, this is an imaginary distribution, so don't uh, think of like uh, the distribution of emission worldwide per individuals is like this. So we have, uh, this is let's say, empirical distribution of annual emission per individual. And you see that there is a change of colors at the value that is 2.1. Do you know which, what is this value? What does it correspond to? OK. OK, this is what I thought. <laughs> it's a Paris Agreement, so a Paris Agreement budget that basically says that if in order to limit uh, global warming by 2 degrees by 2050, this is a budget that is allocated to every individual in the world. OK, this is the average, of course. So now, where do we stand uh, with respect to this, as individuals? Uh, are we more like a, a biker with almost zero emission? Are we uh, a car, a very polluting one, or are we more airplanes? And, um, and for me, I think it's in order to change, we need to be able to position ourselves in this distribution. Today, I will not say that machine learning and data will mitigate climate change directly. However, I will try to convince you that they can help 
make individual realize their ecological impact and make a change or trigger a change at the individual level. Okay, so um, I will just look at multiple levels to raise awareness at the individual level. We'll look at the individual levels, obviously, but then we'll look at community, so the community around an individual. We'll look at country and worldwide. Okay, and I will structure the talk by describing uh, different, uh, let's say, different levels and how we can contribute. So let's start with the country level. Um, let me introduce where uh, I work at Swisscom. So I work at Swisscom at work at what's the Mobility Insights team, uh, which the mission is really to provide, to build mobility indicators that are useful for cities and urban planners on top of the data, anonymous data that is generated by the Swisscom network. And I will explain how we do that. As a telecom company, Swisscom has the obligation to collect network data at the cell level. Okay, this is for billing and network optimization, and this data is kept six months. The data is then anonymized with the possibility for an opt-out, and then we receive, at, at Mobility Insights Platform, we receive like an anonymized version of this data. We have our pipeline with machine learning algorithm and data processing pipeline in order to build aggregated mobility indicators that are useful for like uh, cities, urban planners, public entities, and also research institutions. So now I will show you very quickly like a website that we, that we are building and that we release very soon to the public. Uh, and uh, we take, like I say, the data for public good is not only a motto at Swisscom, so we try really to contribute and to give back to the community. The goal of the website is really to communicate about the carbon footprint or mobility. And uh, have, like, let's say, a clear map of Switzerland and the emissions that are associated with every canton in Switzerland. So here I'm showing you a screenshot of the website. So you can see first that we estimate the every, for every Swiss canton the average CO2 footprint that comes from mobility. We see that the average resident in Switzerland emits around 3.8 tons. Okay, this is an like a number in itself. It's not very quantifiable. It's quite abstract. But if you put it in perspective, with the budget that we have to 2.1 tons, Paris Agreement, this is like what is produced only from mobility, which usually is 30% of our carbon footprint. So we see we are very far in Switzerland and actually in the world also from this budget of the 2.1 uh, tons per individual per year. And we can also give some intuition here, you see it, because three, that eight tons is not really uh, quantifiable, doesn't make sense. This is equivalent to 20 car trips from Zurich to Barcelona per Swiss resident. We can then focus on, uh, on cantons, of course. We can here you see that Zurich is producing 25% more than the Swiss, uh, on the average Swiss canton. And that 46, for example, uh, where is the, yeah, 46 of the 46% of the, of the emission are associated with the car trips. And we can also give some intuition about this. We say, okay, the average resident from the canton of Zurich emits the equivalent of four flights from Zurich to Chicago. And this takes, so for this to be absorbed, it takes a forest area of about three soccer fields to sequester this amount within a year. So this is three soccer fields per resident of the canton of Zurich, for example. So you can extrapolate the number to the whole, uh, to whole Sweden. How do we do that? I will go quite quickly over this. So as I said, we have like a very noisy data that's coming from the antennas. We try to reconstruct, let's say, what we call a trip. And uh, sometimes we are successful when the trip is quite long. We can we are successful in associate. We have unsupervised methods that allow us to associate to a rail because we take into account the rail network. And this allows us to classify as a, as a train ride. And then for the other portion that you see here in blue and green, sometimes as a, is, if this is short and it's urban areas, we have a hard time distinguishing between different modes of transport. So there is uncertainty, for example, in this portion, if it's a bike, a fast bike or, or, or a slow car. So what we do is basically we, uh, we, we take a probabilistic approach where we say, okay, uh, what's the probability that it's a car, what's the probability that it's a bike? And then we basically lower and upper bound the CO2 emission according to this. Because you know, like a, low, a car that is at a very low speed emits a lot, whereas a bike, of course, emits uh, almost zero. And from that, we can estimate the CO2 that is associated with the trip, and then we can extrapolate this to the millions of trips that are made in Switzerland. 
So, empowering communities. So now we'll talk about the dimension about the community. And here, uh, very quickly, so we are able to estimate, let's say, uh, uh, the carbon footprint for a community. And here we, uh, we did some work to estimate the carbon footprint associated with the event we are attending right now, so the Applied Machine Learning Days. So if you are curious about this, Leandro, who is our expert, he's here, will be at the Swisscom stand afterwards, so you can ask him all the questions about this, and he will be happy to, to give you more details. Let's say empowering individuals. So now we talked about country, community, as an example, and then now we'll talk about individuals. So we, we, this is a web application that we are basically uh, releasing internally in Swisscom, so this is only available for Swisscom employees. And it's called what we call a mobility or sustainability report. And this, of course, as we go at the individual level, it requires opt-in from a Swisscom employee. So basically, as a Swisscom employee, you can go on this page, you can give your Swisscom business phone number, email, and then there is a two-way authentication that is happening there, and you can opt-in. Okay? And the idea is to offer to every Swisscom employee the possibility to basically to measure the impact it has in the environment. So for me, I'm showing you screenshots from my, uh, for what I see. So it says, hello, okay, it's me. And then it gives me basically a profile uh, based on my mobility about my carbon footprint. So first, I'm 29th over 81 in this platform. And I emit twice less than the average member of the platform, which is uh, good news. So uh, you can see average CO2 emission is 33 grams per kilometer that I make. To put it in perspective, like a train is 7 grams per kilometer and a car is 150. So you can see here the distribution of the community. You have people that are more uh, volcanoes, so 197 uh, grams per kilometer. And you have people that are really at the low end, which is basically the example we should follow. Hopefully, is like 7 grams per kilometer. This is basically a train. And I can have some statistics by my average daily distance. I make around 58 kilometers per day. And then I can have also something about my carbon footprint. So for me, over 30 days, I produce 43 kilograms, which is basically uh, what is absorbed by 0.7 trees in the next 10 years. This is over only 30 days. Huh? And I can see also a time series of my emissions. Some days I emitted more because once I rented the car for sure, and then this basically exploded my CO2 footprint. And I can see actually what's most important and I think what brings value is basically to see the routes we make and their associated uh, carbon footprint. Here you see, from my home to somewhere, one trip is responsible of almost 60% of my emissions. Okay? So this provides something really an understanding of the carbon footprint and the mobility, and then provide also something actionable for the user to act on. And then, of course, you can review uh, your trip. And this I will explain. The idea is basically, as we have a very noisy data, it's not always easy to estimate the right CO2 footprint associated with the trip. So what we do, as we have individuals that are opted in, we ask them for the contribution. What does it mean? It means, in addition to the unsupervised methods we have, the user is able to provide feedback. Say, okay, I left my home, I went to the main office, and I took this mode of transport. And we take this as input for, to improve the predictions. Because we also, on top of the unsupervised, we build supervised models that allow us to have better estimation of CO2 per individual. Give you um, a glimpse about how we do it. So we really learn from user feedback. We have a data pipeline that is unsupervised. We received some trips for the users that are basically labeled by the unsupervised algorithm. And then we have individual specific AI. So the AI that is specific for the individuals who opted into the platform that basically make a prediction. We show this prediction to the user, and the user gives feedback. This allows us to have labeled data. And, uh, and also, it allows the user to have more accurate estimate of the CO2 footprint. And then, we use these uh, labels, of course, to obviously to retrain uh, the individual-specific uh, AIs we have. And this also offers to the user a community view. Where does he stand with regard to the community? Here, the community being the Swiss common employees to have a dashboard with accurate CO2 emissions and uh, recommendations. OK. To conclude, um, for climate change mitigations, individual behaviors have the potential to be more rapid and more widespread than governmental policy and major transformation in industry. And this talk that showed you how machine learning and data can help us 
and help individual estimate and quantify their carbon footprint, which will hopefully act as a catalyst for a change of behavior uh, in the future. Of course, as I'm saying, it's, I'm trying to, this, is the, this is one of the elements that will help us basically change our behaviors, but I think it can contribute, and a few individuals in this room are, uh, I don't know, convinced or see that there is something that needs to be done, and there is awareness, I think it's already a, a big step we made in the right direction. Thank you.